In this one, I wanna go over the top five photo editing apps for iPhone. And these are all free to use. There are some paid options in some of them that you can go for, but you don't have to. Most of these are really, really great and the free versions give you a ton of features. And I really like them, I use them all. So let's start with the first one, which I use a lot, which is Photoshop. So you can get the Photoshop Express app for the iPhone and it's totally free. There are a few things that you have to pay for and if you wanna go for the paid version, I suggest just getting the Adobe Cloud or Creative Cloud, I think it's called. And basically you pay a bit of money each month and then you get access to the entire suite. So you don't just get Photoshop, but you get Lightroom, Photoshop Mix, uh, Adobe Rush and a bunch of others as well. You can pay for it, but there's tons of free features. Photoshop, I would say, is a professional way to edit on your smartphone. So if you're looking to maybe take your uh, editing up a gear, you can really change all of the aspects of the photo. So changing exposure and the styles, you can all do that in Photoshop. And to be honest, Photoshop Mix, Lightroom are really good as well. I'll bundle them in to basically talking about Photoshop. They're all free downloads and they all have specific advantages. Photoshop Mix is really good at cutting out backgrounds if you wanna do that. Lightroom is a bit more in depth in terms of getting the exposure, also the range of images and just tons of different effects as well. In Photoshop, you can really change the minute details. So you can go in, change the highlights, change the shadows, and there's also a ton of LUTs as well that you can use. LUTs are lookup tables and they let you change the style of images. So you can take kind of a boring photograph and just make it look a bit different, change the color scheme, maybe have it look a bit more autumnal or just different color schemes on there. That's really good in Photoshop. And I would say all the basics of changing the look and feel of a photo, you can definitely do in this. You can also really easily crop images in Photoshop to make them perfect for social media. The thing that Photoshop doesn't really do is enable you to airbrush uh, photographs of people. So if you do a lot of portrait work, then there are other apps that maybe let you airbrush and change the way that people look a little bit better. Photoshop really is for just changing styles. It's a great app, so I'd check it out. Moving on though, we have Snapseed and this is actually Google's app and you can get it free on the iPhone as well, which is a really great thing. And I would say this is more or less the same as Photoshop, but I would say the layout and the way that you use it is slightly different. So with Snapseed, you do get a bunch of filters that you can use. These are okay. There are other apps with a bunch more filters though. The benefit of Snapseed and why I like using Snapseed really is how intricate you can be with your changes in terms of exposure and range. Snapseed has this brush feature and you can actually change the exposure of basically brush strokes. So whereas Photoshop lets you change exposure basically for the image as a whole, in Snapseed you can get really intricate, use the brush and just change exposure for brush strokes with your finger when you use it. There are also really detailed tools when it comes to changing perspective and the way that the image is seen. There are some healing options. So if you work with portraits and you need to maybe heal some blemishes, they are on here. Again, they're not the very best I've seen from all the apps, but I think they do a good job overall. One of the downsides of Snapseed is that the looks that you put onto your images can't really be changed too much. So there are some good looks that change the style of your image, but you can't really change them as much as some other apps. However, what I do like about Snapseed is that all the other changes that you make in terms of the styles and the dynamic range and the exposure all can be changed very, very intricately with either slider bars or that brush, as I mentioned. Maybe some more arty things, some stickers and some more fun stuff. Maybe choose a different app, which I'll talk about now. So we come to PixArt and this one is for adding loads of cool stuff, stickers, different animations, different text, different drawings as well. So this one's definitely not as professional as Photoshop or Snapseed, but you get a ton of fun features that definitely might appeal to some of you. You definitely can change the way the images look in this. So if you took an image that's a bit too bright or a bit too dark, you can change it. It's not as in-depth as Photoshop or Snapseed for that though. Really the main selling point of this app is all the drawings you can do. So you can make tons of different drawings just with your finger or you can add tons of different fonts and texts, even animations and stickers that go onto your images. What I really like about Pixar is the pencil feature. So you can basically write on top of your images in pretty much anything that you want. So it's like glitter or different colors. You pretty much have unlimited choice to make images actually look kind of fun and different. 
So this one's definitely aimed more at just like casual users, not really pros who really want to take, you know, great landscape shots or maybe wildlife shots and really edit the photos and make them look great. This is just a fun app for people, maybe sending it to their friends or putting it on social media and just adding some cool stuff on top. Pic Collage is next on the list and this again is a fun app and just maybe for sharing some photos with family or in different groups that you have, you can put loads of different stickers, animations, also borders, and there's loads of different themes in Pic Collage that change depending on what time of year it is. You can get Halloween themes and Christmas themes. So maybe if you have a family photo, like a fun photo, and you just want to spruce it up a bit, maybe put a cool board around there or some stickers or anything and just share it with your family, this one's for you. Obviously the name of the app, Pit Collage, collages are a big part of it. So there's tons of different features. You can pretty much arrange like three, four, five images in any order that you want and just make a cool collage. There's also options in the app where you can get things printed, um, but you can actually just save images onto your phone and maybe use a different printing service. But it's really cool just to very, very easily put some family photos together and make them look good. Then maybe you can print them out or do whatever you want with them. This one doesn't really have a lot of intricate editing tools. So if you're more professional or you just want to actually make sure that a photo looks good and is exposed correctly, then maybe use Photoshop, save the image in that and then bring it into this one to add some cool effects or put it into a collage. A big downside, unfortunately, on this one is the watermark and you can pay to take it away. It's kind of annoying. I don't like watermarks, but I guess if you're just sharing it amongst family, it doesn't matter too much. So if you want a similar app, not exactly the same, but it has a lot of the features, I would maybe use this one, which is next on the list, Canva. Canva is something that I use all the time. I use it for a lot of my thumbnails. So Canva, again, isn't like Photoshop or Snapseed. So the tools that you have for making sure that a photo is looking good aren't really that robust. Canva is for essentially making tons of different stuff. So you can make logos or you can upload three or four images and then put them together on one main image and basically share that with your friends. So the reason I use Canva for a lot of my thumbnails is that with Canva, you can essentially choose any canvas size or aspect ratio that you want. You can choose from all of the different presets or you can just put your own image size in there. So I use it for a lot of thumbnails, so I get the perfect aspect ratio. And then what you can do when you upload images in there is basically move them around. And Canva has this really great feature where when you do move all of the images that you uploaded around, it basically knows where all of the other ones are and you can align them very easily. You get these dashed lines, usually pink or red, and you can really easily see exactly where one image is in relation to others. Canva is a really top choice and I think a lot of these apps work in unison so maybe Photoshop or Snapseed to get your image looking good initially then you can download it and then maybe use it in Pic Collage or Canva to make something different as well. Anyway, that is five top photo editing apps for the iPhone that I use all the time. Let me know which ones you use in the comments or other ones that I didn't mention that maybe some other people can use and get some value out of. That's it for this one though. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.